Researchers are sounding a new alarm about an earthquake fault off the northern California coast. According to a new study, a large quake in the Cadia, uh, Cascadia subduction zone could cause land along the coastline to sink permanently, increasing the long-term flooding risk. Researchers say such a quake would likely cause a downward shift of anywhere from six inches to six feet along coastal areas between southern Washington and Humboldt Bay. The fault is capable of mega earthquakes, can cause tsunamis. There is a 15% chance of a major quake there over the next 50 years. For more on this, we're joined now by one of the co-authors of this study, Diego Melgar, who's the head of the Cascadia Region Earthquake Science Center. Diego, thank you for the time. It's good to have you on. So lay this out for us. How would a mega quake on the Cascadia subduction zone increase the long-term flooding risk for people who live along the coast? It's a pleasure to be here with all of you this afternoon. Well, uh, folks have heard about the shaking that comes with the earthquake. They've heard about the tsunami. But this is about what happens next, what happens in the years to decades following these really big events. Now we know that we expect the land to drop, as you said, by six inches, sometimes more like six to eight feet. And so what comes with that is more increased risk of flooding. So places that right now are not flooding during king tides or during big storms would all of a sudden be in the flooding zone. And that hazard would be there for the next uh, decades to centuries following the big event. Yeah, I think, it, you know, to sort of get a sense of what we're talking about and the kind of land sink that we potentially could see, there's an image that was put out by the, the USGS, and I want to put it up on the screen for our viewers because it really sort of paints this picture. This is an image that was taken following a magnitude 9.2 earthquake that hit Alaska back in 1964 and this is downtown Anchorage here. The buildings on the right side of the street were at sea level but they sunk 11 feet during the earthquake here. Talk about what the long-term impact would be for those coastal communities and especially the infrastructure if you had that kind of a mega quake on the Cascadia subduction zone. That, that is a wonderful visual. Thanks for putting that up. I think that really brings it home for your viewers. So what we're talking about is uh, critical infrastructure. If we have schools, firehouses, police stations, hospitals and clinics, they might be today in places which we would consider maybe safe from flooding. But when we take this new calculation into account, they might not be. And so we need to start having honest and frank conversations about long-term urban planning in these communities so that we can start to prepare. We don't have to move places that are in the potential flood zone right now today but we have to move them in the coming decades. Mm -hmm. So the time to start talking about that is right now. Yeah, this is sort of begins that conversation. All right, so how does the ongoing threat of sea level rise from climate change that obviously we've all been talking about factor in here? How much does that raise the level of concern about coastal flooding in the years and decades to come, particularly here uh, along the West Coast? Absolutely. These two things come hand in hand. We know that because of sea level rise, flooding is getting worse in our coastal communities. Anybody who lives there right now knows this to be true. There's places that weren't flooding 20 years ago that are flooding now today. So now you add this earthquake-driven drop, and so it's a double whammy of sea level rise plus the earthquake drop. So we have to contend with both of, the, both of these things, which is why it's important that we start having these conversations now and that we do not become complacent. Now, this is all a little bit scary, I get that, but um, knowledge is power. Um, and so the more we talk about these things and the more we get to talking with engineers and urban planners, the better we'll be in the decades to come. Yeah, I mean, it, it is important right now. It's never too early to start planning here. So what, what do you expect that communities along the West Coast who, who are in this area of concern, how do they use the information that you and your colleagues have put together in this study to, to better prepare for this kind of a scenario? As you said, you know, those preparations, they're not going to happen overnight here. This is in years and decades to come. But how do they take the information from this study and utilize it moving forward? We, it comes through city ordinances, urban planning, it's policy. It's now time to put this science into policy. We see this in the West Coast with other hazards, right? When we talk about wildfires and how we build into the wildland urban interface, we need policy to sort of curtail development and say, where do we build? What do we move? What do we prioritize? 
this is no different. It's the same situation. We have areas that are now going to be in the flood risk zone. So we need to start thinking about what policies, what urban planning techniques we need to start developing. Maybe a few seawalls here and there. Maybe we leave this dune or this marsh undeveloped so that it can be a natural break for the floods that are to come. But these are the things that we need to start talking about. The science is clear. This is what is likely. And now we need to convert that into policy. Is, is there the thought here that if you do have a large enough earthquake and you, and you really have an increased risk of flooding in some of these coastal areas that potentially uh, these are places that people will not be able to live long term? That's correct. And so we will see permanent losses. Th these might be places that are now uh, arable land, places where we have agriculture or places where there's herding or places where there's uh, you know cows that are roaming there that might not recover there there's some of these places are currently manufacturing there's factories in the flood zone that's not going to recover either so now that we've identified these zones well what do we do now i don't have the answer because it has to be a community driven initiative i don't know every community you know yourselves so we can facilitate those conversations by giving you the hard numbers and the difficult truths but ultimately, it comes down to each community to decide for itself how they adapt to this looming uh, hazard. Yeah, this is something that so many communities are going to have to face here in the future. Appreciate the perspective and all the important information. Diego Melgar, head of the Cascadia Region Earthquake Science Center. Thank you for coming Pleasure. on.